In section 5.2, our question kind of revolves around this picture. We want to be able to figure out where two lines intersect, where they cross each other. And this will again will be important later on at the end of the chapter when we start doing the linear programming application problems. There will be times where we need to find the intersection point between two lines. And so to do that, we have several methods. Basically, it boils down to what we call solving a system of linear equations. Each of these lines, the blue and the green, is represented by a linear equation. And if we put them together on the same picture, we can think of that as a system of linear equations. You might imagine there being a third one, for instance, but in this case, a system of two linear equations on this graph. We can figure out where they cross if we know how to solve that system to find the point that lies on both lines or the point that satisfies both equations. So there's several ways of doing this. Number one, we could do this just by graphing. If we can graph both lines and see where they cross, we can just read off that intersection, like in this example where they cross at the point 1, 3. We can always check an answer like this by plugging in x equals 1 and y equals 3 to both equations and make sure that it satisfies or fits into both equations. So for instance, 2 times 1 plus 3 does equal 5. So it fits that equation and it fits the other one as well. So you can always test your answers by plugging them back in. So if you can graph the two lines, that's one way to solve them. But a lot of times the graphs we draw might be hand drawn, so it's hard to see exactly where they cross, or they may not cross at nice round numbers. So it might be hard to see from a graph what the solution is. So we want some other methods to do that. And there's basically two competing methods. Both of them work on any system of equations like this, as long as you know how to use them. And I'll show you both of them. Obviously, you can choose your favorite if you run into a problem like this. But it's nice to know how to do both of them, because some problems are easier with one method or with the other. So it's good to know both methods. But these two methods, one is called substitution, and the other is called elimination. So the method of substitution, the idea is to take these two equations and to solve for one of the variables in one of the equations. So there's a lot of choice you can make. You get to choose which equation to solve. You get to choose which variable to solve for. So if you're looking at an example like this, you'd say, well, the easiest thing would be to solve for y in that second equation because I'm not going to have to divide by anything to do that. So that freedom of choice means you get to pick the easiest thing to do. So say we pick that and we solve for y, then we have that second equation rewritten in the form y equals 2x plus 3. And that means that we can replace y with 2x plus 3 anytime we want. Now if we replace y with 2x plus 3 in the second equation, it's not terribly helpful because it just gives us kind of the same information back. But where this gets useful is if we take that to the first equation and replace y with 2x plus 3 in the first equation. And if we do that, we get something like this. And that gives us an equation with only one variable, which we know how to solve. Using our algebraic methods, we can collect all the x terms on the left side, collect everything else on the right side, and then divide by whatever the coefficient of x is to find that x equals negative 1. So that's half the answer. And then to find y, we just need to plug that back into either one of the starting equations. The easiest, most natural thing is to plug it into the equation that we solved for y, because that'll lead to the le least amount of work that we have to do. So if we do that, we find that the corresponding y value is y equals 1. So that's our solution. That's the point where those two lines intersect. And of course, you can test it again and check your answer by plugging those into both equations and make sure we get a true statement in both cases. So that's a quick run through of one example. There's a, a little box here with the steps written out for you if you like this kind of thing. If you like having steps written out uh, in detail like this, you can follow that. And then there's a couple of examples of solving systems like this just to give you some practice getting comfortable with this uh, method of solving. And again, this works on any system of equations you'll see, but there are times where some of them might be easier with the other method. So we'll make sure we can do both methods. If you happen to like substitution really well and not like elimination, 
you can always use substitution, uh, but it's good to know both to make your life as easy as possible. So if we go on to elimination, this one is a whole other method, but it starts the same way, where we have a system of equations that we want to solve. And the idea behind elimination is that if we add the two equations together, if we do it the right way, things might cancel and simplify for us. So the idea, in short, is that if 3x minus 2y equals 10, I'm allowed to add 3x minus 2y to one side of an equation and add 10 to the other side of an equation because they're the same thing, because they're balanced. So if I happen to do it with this system, notice that if I add these two equations just straight down, the x's combine and the y's cancel each other because there's a positive 2y and a negative 2y. This leads us to an equation with just one variable, and from here we can do the same thing we did in the substitution method. We can solve for x, and then we can substitute that into either of the original equations to find y that goes with it. So if it happens to be set up this way, where there's this positive and negative either on the y's or the x's, elimination is really easy to do. If it's not set up quite so conveniently, we can still make it work. So here's an example of a new problem where it's not set up quite so easily. But this one sh goes through and shows you that if you multiply one of the equations by something, you can make them line up. So here, if we want the y's to cancel when we add the two equations, we need this to be a plus 7y, which means we need to multiply the whole second equation by 7 to make that happen. Notice that it also changes the 3x into 21x, and it changes the negative 20 into negative 140. But when we do that, now we can add the two equations, canceling the y's, and continuing on as before. So elimination, it starts out looking a little more complicated than substitution, but there are lots of cases where elimination is faster if it happens to be set up to make the cancellation happen conveniently. So again, there's the steps written out for you and several other examples of equations that you can solve through elimination. So you can go through and look at those. But again, the whole goal of this section is being able to find the intersection of two lines on a graph, either by observing that on the graph or by using substitution or elimination to find that intersection point.